Are you a new copywriter looking for your first assignment? Perhaps you start to learn how to write copy and you enjoy the process, you enjoy the creativity, and now you want to prove your copy ability and get your first client. I'm Justin Hit with Ad Briefing's Copywriting Tips. We help our freelance copywriters grow their book of business and produce the lifestyle, the opportunity, and the agency that they desire. So you're a new copywriter. You want that first assignment. Maybe you've written for yourself. You've written for a few other people. Maybe you've done affiliate offers. And now you're looking for the opportunity to find a customer. Why do we want to find customers? Well, first off, if you're looking for customers, you're looking in the wrong place because we want clients. We want regular and consistent work. We want assignments that come year after year, month after month, so that we have consistent income. The biggest problem with most copywriters is they do not have consistent income. They, in fact, have what's called roller coaster income. So they might have some great assignments today, but while they're working on the assignment, they're not really investing in that next, next client. So first thing we have to understand is to get your first client, you need to have something to offer them and then something else to offer them. Now, what does that mean? Well, the first thing you can offer them is a free consultation, something that is high value, but low effort on your part that helps you better understand the needs and desires of prospective clients. But who are we going to offer that to? So we need to step up, step back a little further and we need to think about who the customer audience is. So now when I sit down with a client and we're, we're talking about that first assignment, maybe you're a new copywriter attending one of our group workshops and you say to me, look, I want to get my first assignment and I'm going to offer a consultation. I'm going to do a, a strategic analysis. I'm going to do a copy check. I'm going to do a checklist. I'm, I say, for who? Who are you going to do this for? And they say, well, people who want to hire copywriters. See, that's not good enough. So before you go for that first assignment, I want you to think about who you are as a person who you, you know, and, and this means the knowledge that you have, the past experiences you have. Do you fit any particular customer market? Uh, have you written copy uh, for certain kinds of product offers that you'd like to continue to write for? Uh, have you been in, had the opportunity to work in an agency before? What is it that makes you unique that would help you match with a certain buyer of copywriting? Yes. Whoever you go after as a prospect needs to be a buyer of copywriting. They need to understand direct response enough to know that we're going to test this copy, that we're going to measure its success by the number of leads generated or the number of sales produced. But it has to be somebody specific. So have you had experience selling door-to-door a consumer product? Do you want to write copy for the consumer market? Now, the companies that hire copywriters in the consumer market tend to be those who will run an infomercial or they'll have a long-form sales letter. And that could be anything from uh, dried goods to homesteading product to magazines or periodic subscriptions, could be newsletters. There's a wide range. And so when we find out where we fit in those areas, we're more able to then find prospective buyers to then make an offer to. Now, again, that offer can be as simple as, and we've talked about it in other podcasts, that offer can be as simple as an initial consultation. Now, somebody who's regularly hiring copywriters may not want to pay for a consultation to talk to you about copy. They may instead point you to their bulletin board. They may point you to a message system or an announcement board where they look for copywriters consistently. They post assignments and copywriters bid on those assignments. It's okay to start there, but please do not stay there. If you are going to go to Upwork and put your shingle out as a copywriter, you have to understand that those environments hire the lowest bidder. The buyers don't understand what copy is. They don't know the value of copywriting. They just want a sales letter done. And if it doesn't work, they're going to blame you anyway. It's very important to understand. If you do business with low dollar clients, you get low dollar results. Now, how do you break into the bigger dollar clients? Well, you might think you need experience, but again, you already have some kind of experience or affinity with either the customer that you're writing for or the product that you're offering. And so you don't necessarily have experience writing copy for a particular company or an industry, but you can write within that industry. Now, what I suggest, and I've talked about this before, when we talk about proving your copy ability, I suggest you start building a mailing list of those individuals who would buy the products and services that you want to write for. 
So this gives you an opportunity to see what copies out there. And it's, and so for example, I started out with newsletters in different areas that I was interested in. And then I offered my services to other people who wanted to reach the same audience. And by then I understood the audience inside and out. I have written copy for sales manager. Uh, so the customer was a sales manager uh, and they were buying processes or, or software as a solution. Uh, and there were uh, fleet fuel companies, companies who were uh, fleet managers hire, uh, hiring or, or uh, services in the petroleum industry, or they were hiring the uh, buying the fuel itself. But the key here is I got into a sales position so that I can get close to the copy that worked. And then in doing so, I built a mailing list to make offers to. So I didn't wait for there was a to there was a company. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't wait till there's a company. You can use affiliate offers. You can do joint ventures. You can get hired as a independent sales representative, and you do this in the area in which you have interest, and then you start honing your writing skills, actually in front of real prospects, generating real leads, generating real sales. Now again, if you need money quickly, you can become a sales professional in the field you want and use your skills as writing to do a prospect newsletter or to do some other type of work tied to generating commission sales or generating sales. And then you can pitch inside that company to write for their whole organization. You can apply for a position. I know a lot of freelance copywriters don't want to hear me say this, but I'd rather you get $1,000 a month, $3,000 a month, $10,000 a month in a job then struggle as a freelance copywriter because the the pitch on other copywriting sites is this fantastical work from the beach thing. It's not the right way it really works. When you have multiple assignments lined up, so so if you have roller coaster income, the solution to that is to have multiple assignments lined up. And so now you're doing one assignment after another, and they're all exciting and they're creative and they're fun, but one assignment after another and then putting those assignments out in the marketplace to see whether they convert or not. It doesn't matter if you do that for yourself, you do that for somebody else, or you do that for a freelance client. None of that matters. It's the same function. So do you understand how to do A-B splits? Do you understand how to do headline testing versus offer testing? Do you understand how to structure your copy so that it can be used online? or in a video, or in an audio program, or from a platform. Platform. See, it's not one size fit all, fits all, so you've got to look for those opportunities that are inside your existing skill set or your existing experiences. So perhaps you're retired and you're picking up copywriting and you used to be in sales and you're going to write copy about the sales process and sell, helps people sell sales programs, but you're also going to go back to the industry where you sold and then you're going to offer training services or you're going to offer to write copy for companies who have salespeople who so you can create the tools that you wish you had now for some people this leads into the information publishing world some people they stay in the affiliate marketing world other people go on to get larger assignments it doesn't matter because you're going to need a combination of these things to maintain consistent and regular cash flow so a lot of times people will say, well, how much can I earn as a copywriter? Well, I've been paid five figures for assignments and I've been retained for a whole year and it was worth more than six figures. So it was, you know, uh, mid six figures. If you get residuals, that's another thing. I don't usually get residuals because uh, a lot of times the companies I'm working for, I'm writing technical documents, I'm writing uh, sales educational pieces and I'm writing lead generation or rewriting existing sales letters. Um, so I don't really, I, I haven't one offed and done a residual on something. And then there are times where I'm also offering strategic consulting. So I'm actually gaining a revenue from the strategic consulting. I might write a custom report for somebody. Um, I have a wide range of things. Whatever it is for you, remember, it can be varied. And so sometimes you might be writing sales letters, other times you might write, write articles, and I personally enjoy that variety because if you're really going to have consistent income, you need to have a consistent flow of new clients. So what are we doing now? We understand who our clients are, we understand who we're going to target, and then the first assignment you have is to write letters to these people. 
to start building those relationships. It could be writing scripts so you could do a podcast. It could be writing scripts or speaking at events. Um, it really just depends on you. Now, when we sit down with uh, clients, usually I find out that they can, um, like in my case, I'm sitting in front of a book here. It says it, it's called Your First Assignment. It's 88, let me see how many pages it is, uh, 92 pages. And it's the notes I have from working with clients to help them get their first assignment. And I've added things in here in, in, in April 2020. I added a diagram here that talks about a hybrid marketing agency and how you can use that. With you know, So basically you and a personal assistant can help you start getting that, that flow of new clients. I have maps in here about how to find new clients. I have transcripts of presentations I've done in 2013 all collected here. So so we really have to find your method and approach to build on past experiences to ultimately connect your past experiences as the key to your client success. And then you're you are going to bid on some work. And you are going to have to put out proposals and have them rejected. And you're going to be writing assignments that are maybe slightly off of the sales copy side. Or you might be doing tests. Or you might be writing on commission only. But again, once you get that first assignment, you're now starting to build out your portfolio. I've been in situations, some of my clients have been in situations, especially the coaching folks at Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips, have been in the situation where they're making more money on consultations and strategy calls than they are on actually writing copy. Because they have insights into a particular audience. And so they'll come on and do a strategy call. The client will have a bunch of their copywriters on the call. And then this this individual will review what the other copywriters wrote, provide feedback, and that's that's their job. They're not they're not their mind isn't tied to selling just copywriting. Now we have to be careful though, because if the customer doesn't know what it is that you're selling, and they don't know if you're a strategy person or if you're a copywriting person or you're a whatever person. And as a freelancer, that could be detrimental. So we have to quickly transition from being a freelance copywriter to being a small agency that offers a portfolio of services all gatewayed through some kind of consultation. It could be your discovery call. It could be your uh, an actual consultation. And in that call, you're going to ask open-ended questions. You're going to develop solutions. Uh, now, those solutions you develop don't solve the problem completely. It's a solution as to what approach you're going to take. Uh, so, for example, you're sitting with a client and they say, hey, look, we'd like to increase our sales. Okay, well, what channels are you currently selling through? Which ones are most successful? You might say, okay, well, here's what I ought to look at. I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at uh, modeling your controls in one medium into another medium. That way, what's currently working well for you online, we can try to make it work well for you also as a direct mail piece. Does that sound good to you? You know, that's the kind of solution I'm talking about. But you can't get there unless you have the credibility with an audience who buys copywriting or buys marketing services. And how do we get credibility with that audience? We don't go and invent it. We don't go try to do some cheap jobs for people. We use our past experiences. So dust off that resume. And if you're willing to work in that area of past experiences, many people who are on this uh, podcast are in their 30s, 40s, 50s. They have some kind of past experience for five to 10 years that they can draw from to get those first assignments. This way, you don't have to undercut yourself. This way, you don't have to go out on one of these boards and start bidding for stuff. And then if you are bidding for those things, you do it quietly, but you use it to build that portfolio. Now, the last thing I want to share with you here is that your first copywriting assignment in each of these categories... So you might have done copy before, but I'm talking about a five-figure assignment. I'm talking about a six-figure assignment. It's not going to be just writing one piece of copy. It might be 12 articles. It might be a sales letter and a few lead generation pieces. It could, might be a prospect newsletter, like the framework for a prospect newsletter over the course of a year. That's how you bridge that roller coaster income because now your assignment has a little bit more longevity. So you're not just you know hand to mouth when it comes to your assignments, fifty dollars here, ninety dollars there. The overhead is so high to have such little transactions. Now you can start there; it's okay, but um, you don't want to stay there. 
And so again, when I talk about your first assignment, you almost are going to level up. You can do, you know, whatever assignment you've done in the past is the first for that category. Now you're going to design a better assignment for a better client, and then you'll have a new first and another first. And so if you have that track record built in an incremental way, you don't have to worry about falling back. If you build systems to get new customers and prospects into place, and we've, we've mentioned a few of those, prospect newsletter, letter series, um, you know, follow-up letters, you, know, you don't have to call people on the phone if you don't want to. Uh, but ultimately, this is a structured approach. Now, when I sit down with you on a coaching call or we sit down together, we're always going to build on your past experiences. And that's because it's very likely something you've done in the past, some story you had in the past, some inspiration for being a copywriter is going to to connect with a potential buyer and they're going to trust you even if you've not done a whole bunch of assignments yet. And in fact, the doing of the assignment, they sometimes don't want a copywriter who's done 100 assignments in that product area because then they're going to get the same old, same old. They want innovation in the sense of proven copy methods applied in a new way to their product and service because, again, if they're testing, they, they need to test uh, the variation. They don't want to test the, the same headline over and over. They want to test a new headline or a new approach, not the same thing over and over. So that about wraps up your first assignment, kind of giving you the idea that you probably already have everything you need to get started. It's just a matter of getting started. But if you still feel stuck, I'm Justin Hitt with Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips. You can visit us at www.adbriefings.co.uk and go to the contact page and ask your questions. Now, we also have a free newsletter there. I hope you'll join us on the free newsletter. I have a lot of resources available. And then when we do our group coaching calls, you're welcome to join us and ask your questions there as well. The key to getting results in copywriting is to be willing to do those firsts. And then from there, just keep building on top of that. We don't want you to build slow because there are ways to build fast. I hope I've shared some of those ways here. Again, I'm Justin Hitt with Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips, and I'll see you in the next episode.